spacecraft did not crash in Roswell, New Mexico in 1947. You know flat earthers, I guarantee it. But you don't know who they are because they're afraid of talking about it. This is not a test. This is your emergency broadcast system. Hello and welcome to the 37th annual Subliminal Deception Podcast. Your weekly dose of conspiracy theory. Bullshit, my name is Cody, and I'm joined by my pal Phil. How are you? Doing good, buddy. How about yourself? Not too bad. Uh, obviously, it was Thanksgiving yesterday. Um, I don't know about you, but holy shit, I haven't ate that much food in a long time, and I enjoy leftovers today, which is always great. I was so fucking full. Holy shit, I didn't eat again till like noon today. How about, how about yourself? How was your Thanksgiving? It was great. Uh, me and the family, we all... Went over to my mom's house, and she made roast beef this year, which was excellent. No turkey. So I was stuffed as hell, but I didn't have the uh, the sleepiness coming around <laughs> at 4 o'clock. So. Man, dude, I was so fucking tired when I finally left my parents' house, and I had to drive, you know, the two-plus hours back up here. And when I finally got home, I passed right the fuck out. So I was tired as shit. But, uh... Yeah, so- I, uh... This morning I ended up driving back and we had just had breakfast casserole and it was uh it was good. It just always, you know, I get I eat too much cuz it's so good and <laughs> it's hard to like sit in one spot in a cramped little car that I drive and yeah. you're that full. What do, what exactly is in a breakfast casserole? Uh it's eggs, sausage, cheese and like bread. Okay. So it's kind of yeah. like a kind of like a giant quiche then huh yeah it's a that's pretty much what it is it's just more bread than egg quiche Mm. is more egg i think yeah i i fucking love quiche and shit but man it is like actually quiche is pie crust isn't it i'm not exactly sure like i know the way that i've had it made for me the whole thing was like egg was the crust Mm. it's uh it's fucking i really like it but it's i think it can be kind of a pain in the ass to make it you know what i mean yeah it has to be done well because if you fuck it up it's gonna be all water in the middle so yeah oh yeah i know eggs are weird like that so uh did you get out and do the american black friday yep uh we went to uh three different places uh it wasn't that bad i didn't have to elbow any old ladies even though i was (laughs) tempted to uh i actually joined the dark side and I invited our future overlord into my home. Uh, I Uh-oh. bought a shark uh, robotic vacuum cleaner. Oh, okay. Have you been? Has it been running today? Have you tried it yet? It's on the charger. So if you actually hear something come in and beat me to death, it's probably that. Okay. So yeah, you got to watch out for them. I've never. I don't know if I've ever even been to someone's house where they had one. I'm. I'm sure they work. You know. <laughs> Yeah, they're, uh, I don't think that they like fully clean everything, but I mean, they get you like your high traffic areas. But the weird thing is, usually they're like 400, 350 bucks. Last night they were on sale for like 150. So Hmm. I think they're the first wave though. I mean, of robots in our life. (laughs) I'm sure eventually they'll be taking, taking us over completely. You know, it's funny, like just before we started recording, I was reading a news article that like Black Friday, physical sales where people are going out to the stores is like way down everyone's just shopping online like why would you go out if you can just uh shop from home oh yeah well like two years ago i went to walmart for black friday and it was assholes and elbows like you could not get around people and last night i went and i was like walking down the walkway you know there wasn't really everything was taped off like usual but there was only about a quarter as many people i would say at that same Walmart as there was two years ago. Yeah, I I have a feeling like eventually it's just going to morph into like basically just online shopping, you know, just an extended Cyber Monday, I guess. They'll have Cyber Monday, but it's going to be all November long. That's how it's getting <laughs> to be right now, it seems like. That's true. That's a good point. I'm, I'm waiting for one specific video game to go on sale that I really, really want to play. But unfortunately, 
It did not go on sale quite yet. Maybe Cyber Monday will uh, look better. I'm hoping anyway. But uh, should we should we do our new segment here, or maybe occasional segment? Um, Phil has purchased a rear hot sheet document. I don't know if it's the National Enquirer or if it's the Star or whatever it is. What which one it is, is it? It's the National Enquirer. Hell yeah, the classic. So uh, now, what is on the cover? What is the main story in the National Enquirer? Well, on the cover of the hot sheets today. <laughs> LBJ ordered Hoover to kill JFK. Okay, so I I mean obviously I think this is kind of a big uh big person they like to blame in the uh JFK assassination, but uh did you read that particular article? Uh I did pick through it and it is a bit of a bigger article. The problem is I want to do a JFK uh centric podcast in the future so i'm not gonna actually do that one yeah there is a different one though another uh fan favorite all right far away scientology leader david miscavige <laughs> has been blasted by late founder l ron hubbard's son-in-law who claimed the power hungry tyrant locked him up spit on him and hit him so he locked up l ron hubbard's what did you say stepson or something son-in-law son-in-law okay i thought like, that should be like their god, or that should be like their Jesus, right? Well, the problem is, Davis Miscavige thinks that he's Jesus. That's so. true. Well, the funny part about that whole story is, like, you all the Scientology documentaries I've watched, it's pretty well known that David Miscavige beats his uh, members quite frequently. Yeah, so this guy was married to L. Ron Hubbard's daughter, Suzette, and okay. he's a member of the elite uh, C org. Mm. So he's like, he's in the main, like the main circle, but what I'm pretty he's sure the, he's not the crown though. I'm pretty sure the, uh, the C org guys are the ones he mainly does beat up. Cause they're like the most devout or whatever. Yeah. Well, they're within punching re like reach of him. So <laughs> they're the only ones he can abuse. I would highly recommend this documentary called my Scientology movie. I don't remember if it's on Netflix or if it's on Amazon Prime, but it's like this British guy who's basically trying to communicate with, uh, you know, some of the members. And then he has it was the ex bodyguard, I think, on there. And he show he has him recreate the scenes of basically David Miscavige, how he talks in the meetings and like how he treats these people and shit. It's pretty crazy. He's basically just like storms at a room, fucking throws papers everywhere, calls everyone a piece of shit, punches them, kicks them and all that, and then just leaves. Like, it's pretty, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, pretty funny. I mean, it's not funny that he's beating him, but like, seeing these people reenact it is just like, Jesus Christ, is this guy really a fucking psycho or what? Yeah, seems like, uh, well, I mean, he has full power over the whole fucking thing, so. Yeah, I know. I mean... From what I've gathered, Scientology was, you know, not great before he came around, but it was just more like a bunch of crazy people, kind of. And when he got involved, then it turned it into, like, the money industry and the physical abuse uh, part that we all know about Scientology now. From That's what I've kind of gathered. Um, I don't know if you've heard something different. Well, from what I've heard, when L. Ron Hubbard was in charge, it was kind of directionless. Like, but then David Miscavige kind of like focused everything. It's basically they use their profits to buy up more land so that they can still be considered a nonprofit organization. Mm, like, yeah. He's kind of been the one spearheading like all of this big money grab, land grab. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, it makes sense. They have a ridiculous amount of money. They got to do something with it. Yeah. So in November 1982, uh, he said that he was ordered to account for his transgressions and taken to a small, dank cell with no windows. He claimed Miscavige attacked him in the cell. Wow, okay. Yeah, but so he goes on to say, he walks up to me, grabs my lanyard, rips it off of me, then backhands me. <laughs> he recalls. You never rip a man's lanyard. What are you doing? Yeah, that's if you work in a corporation, especially a mega corporation, your lanyard is your whole life. It's, <laughs> it's like an extension of your soul. They're very important to the corporate world and the convention world, I believe. Yeah. 
So afterwards, he says, my glasses go off flying and break. And then he spits in my face. I have no idea what this is for. Jesus. So that's a pretty, I mean, imagine if your boss did that to you and you were expected to come in the next day. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I'd call in sick or just probably never show up again. Yeah. <laughs> I would just never show up again. Like, All right. I, yeah. I think uh, I think I might walk into HR now. <laughs> I think of course, if you go to if you go to HR Scientology, oh yeah, for, yeah, they're not gonna no. You'll probably just get locked in a fucking hot trailer for a month. Yeah, you you just uh, you pretend like it's just part of the uh, part of the initiation or something. I don't know. It's like you have to no. do. I wonder if he's beat up Tom Cruise before. Oh, I doubt it. With all the money that dude's bringing in, that's uh, true. No way. Nah, that's like their golden boy or whatever. Yeah, he's but, the uh, the fucking spaghetti monster, the magic <laughs> elephant. He's the whole fucking thing. <laughs> All right, well, uh, shall we get on to this week's conspiracy, Phil? Yeah, let's get rolling. All right, I'm going to pretext this with this conspiracy that I'm doing today is kind of beyond my brain comprehension, and it's kind of extremely nerdy. And I don't even know if how much of this you'll be able to understand, Phil. But I saw it, and I saw the word. Well, I'm not going to spoil what I, I'll talk about. What I saw later that drew my attention to this. But how familiar are you with CERN? Oh, the CERN Collider. Uh yes. Well, CERN is the the organization. Yeah, it's the large. They run the Lauren Hadron Collider. Yes, I think that's what I said it right. Yes. Yeah. yeah so we're going to be doing. Uh, CERN conspiracies today. Uh, <laughs> I watched some very nerdy physics videos, so I'm hoping I can tell you what I picked up on those videos, but not. I don't really even understand it that well, but I'm going to try my best. Um, it literally, one of the videos I was watching, this guy, he was talking about uh, one of the particular um, atoms that we're going to be talking about later. And he literally had the math equation on his shirt. And to me, it just looked like a bunch of fucking letters with plus signs on it. I don't even know how that's a math equation, but uh, apparently it is. A bunch of old Greek characters and yeah. then like a plus and minus sign scattered <laughs> yeah. here and there. He's like, yeah, this is, uh, this is blah, 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 proton. I'm like, okay, how the fuck, how do you even put that into math? I don't know. But anyway... <laughs> Okay, buddy, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Trust me, he looks like he's gotten a few swirlies in his life, I'll tell you that much. But uh, we'll start here. The European Organization for Nuclear Research, known as CERN, is a re European research organization that operates the largest particle physics laboratory in the world. Established in 1954, the organization is based in a northwest suburb of Geneva on the Franco-Swiss border and has 23 member states. So there's a lot of really smart people involved with this thing. Not just the Collider, which we will get into, but CERN does other things besides just the Collider. That's just what they're most known for. Now, one of the w videos I was watching um, with a especially crazy man... I don't even remember what his thing was, but he claims that in 1954, um, obviously this company was uh, built or established, and that exact same year the Bilderberg Group was established, so he was trying to make a connection between the two of them, but like I said, he's crazy, and I'm going to talk about his conspiracies later on, and they're pretty wonky, I won't lie to you. <clears throat> of course, and I suppose that the Clintons were somehow involved also. Uh, they might be. <laughs> they they weren't born yet at that time, but I'm sure that they could be squeezed in. <laughs> <laughs> so CERN's main function is to provide the particle accelerators and other infrastru infrastructure needed for high-energy physics research. As a result, numerous exper experiments have been constructed at CERN through international collaborations – the main site at Myron hosts a large computing facility, which is the primary primarily used to store and analyze data from experiments as well as simulate events. Researchers researchers need remote access to these facilities, so the lab has historically been a major wide area network hub. 
Jesus Christ. Okay, that's like their mission statement, kind of, I guess. Um, did you know that CERN is the birthplace of the World Wide Web, Phil? No, I did not. I didn't know that either, and apparently we should thank them because we probably wouldn't be doing this podcast without them creating the World Wide Web, so thank you for that, CERN. Hold on. I thought that Al Gore created the World <laughs> well, Wide Web. Well, hey, maybe he just perfected it. He didn't create it. Uh, this uh, this claims that an English scientist named Tim Berners-Lee invented the World Wide Web in eight, or 1989. He wrote the first web browser in 1990 while he's uh, employed at CERN. So I don't know. I used, I don't know. I was kind of trying to think about it. Like, what do you think his web page would have been about? Like, obviously, it was a shitty web page. Uh, what do you think Mr. Tim Berners put on his first website, Phil? Well, considering <laughs> the person I think might have uh, made it, it might have been one of those red pill videos. Oh, you think Tim Berners Lee made a red pill web page? I imagine anyone who like worked on the internet back then might have had those feelings. So. <laughs> I feel like he probably created the very first porn site, if I had to guess. Look at what I made. Women will have to fuck me now. <laughs> Free porn for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I listed a few quote-unquote notable discoveries that have been made in the CERN facilities now, I'm not going to lie. We won't understand any of these, probably. Uh, <laughs> in 1973, the discovery of the neutral currents in the Gargamel bubble chamber. Does that make any sense to you? Not even a little. <laughs> no. <Nope. laughs> I literally just put these in there because I'm like, this doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, in 1989, the determination of the number of light neutrinos fan neutrino families at the large electron positron collider operating on the Z Bosen peak. Does any of that make sense to you? I am going to say it kind of <laughs> sounds like you took your iPhone and just put like the auto text in. You <laughs> typed in a first word and then hit the middle every single time. <laughs> That's exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, it's I don't know what any of this means. When we start uh, getting into more of the like the conspiracies and stuff, um we'll I can explain that a lot better. I just thought these sounded kind of funny. Uh, yeah. In 1999, the discovery of the direct CP violation in the NA48 experiment. Fascinating. I don't know yeah. what that is at all. But uh, <laughs> it doesn't even sound like words. <laughs> it's it's just, just, <laughs> it sounds like a person who's really dumb but trying to sound smart is just vomiting out intelligent words <laughs> and just hoping for the best. See, next time you're at the bar, Phil, go up to a girl and be like, did you know in 1999 they discovered the direct CP violation in the NA48 experiment? It'll get them every time. Yeah. And uh, if she says, yeah, I did, I'll just walk away. Like, fuck. <laughs> like, fuck. Just walk. I don't want Damn you. <laughs> what if that guy you were talking about with his pickup lines, That's what he. that was his real secret. He just started talking about this, uh, the discoveries at the CERN facilities. Like, that's a then secret. That their brain just fucking collapses, then he just drags them <laughs> home. That's his big fucking move. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll get on to kind of the main thing, which is the Large Hadron Collider, which is the world's largest and highest energy particle cl uh, collider and the largest machine in the world. Now, uh, it lies in a tunnel that is 17 miles in circumference and is in and as deep as... 574 feet so i'm going to describe this as best as i can um, on audio format so effectively when i was watching it it's essentially three circular rings each getting bigger in size um, the small one kind of winds up the uh, protons or whatever then they go into the medium sized one collecting more speed then they get into the large one to gain maximum speed and what, they, what they're doing, effectively, is they have it set up so it travels almost as fast as the speed of light. And then they collide in this one spot. And then they're studying the atoms that are broke off when it collides in this one little area. And I can't remember. They collide, like, so many times within a second. 
but they have gotten it, what did he say, 99.999% as fast as the speed of light. That's how fast they can get the particles moving in this thing. Yeah, they use uh, its subatomic particles, and yeah. then they spin it around and around until it gets up to speed. And then when they collide, uh, whatever like comes off of them or reacts, you know, they break down, they come together, it gets caught in this jelly. And then they analyze the jelly and see like what came about of it. Yeah. What I've heard. Yeah. I mean, essentially, yeah, that's what it is. Um, and the way I was getting it, how they do it, the, why it has to be the three rings is because the protons will slowly gain speed. And as they gain speed, um, they start gaining mass instead of like, it's hard to describe it, but like they don't just get faster. They start getting more mass to them and then they have all these magnets to stop them from uh, hitting the walls and all this shit. And they have like this wave band that keeps them almost like slingshotting them so they get faster and faster. That's why it has to be so big. So there's no chance of it slowing down. And then when they collide, it hits with such force that they can study what's inside of there to basically try to understand the particles in the universe, more or less. It's uh, it's very fascinating, but a lot of people think maybe they have more nefarious things that they could accidentally do by doing this. Um, <clears throat> have you ever heard of the Higgs boson particle? That's the uh, the God particle, correct? Correct. Um, yeah. Apparently, they really hate it being called the God particle. Um, I'm going to describe this as best as I can. Um, once we get to that part of the conspiracy section, um, then they discovered neutrinos, which is a matter that has no mass, um, that all these go along with the Higgs bos boson particle, mind you. And they, uh, like we said, they, the machine, they want to use it to witness what happens when matter and antimatter collide, um, Obviously, you've probably heard that, like, specks of it will, like, blow up Texas, right? You've heard that before? Yeah, I've also heard that uh, I think it's it's antimatter that's the most, like, it. it's the most expensive thing in the world, antimatter, because they have a really hard time creating it or keeping it. Mm. Yeah, that's what I was reading. They, they can create it, but it, uh, what is the word they used? It, like uh degrades at a like r or decomposes or something at like a really 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 rapid pace so it's really hard for them to sustain it yeah you have to contain it inside of like a magnetic field because it can't touch any matter have you ever heard of this shit called uh strangelets no i have not okay so i didn't know this i literally just learned this that so antimatter is extremely volatile and explosive right well, strangelets mm -hmm. are the most explosive material known to man, uh, and they think they were theorizing that strangelets might be what created the Big Bang theory because they're so much more explosive than antimatter is. It's really weird. I don't really understand it at all, but um, yeah. So apparently, in this machine as well, they found a substance they referred to. Uh, as dark matter. Now, basically, I'm sure you might have heard of this. Basically, dark matter is what they believe shrouds the universe that doesn't allow you to see very far. Have you ever heard of that before? Yes, I have heard of it. Yeah, so apparently they've confirmed that it exists within this machine. Um, they've also discovered dark energy, which is what they believe keeps the universe constantly expanding. Um, so that's what keeps it growing constantly, I guess, is what they call dark energy. I don't really know. Uh, it's kind of, kind of creepy to think about if you be, if I'm being honest, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Like <clears throat> what we found out just in the past 50 years, which I mean, it's all theoretical possible. You know what I mean? They, they found it, but they aren't exactly sure like everything about it. They keep finding out more and more, but a lot of it is still theoretical. Yeah. So. Now, um, we'll talk about it when the Higgs boson particle, the God particle or whatever, 
Apparently that was theoretical, and then they've actually discovered it to be a real thing. That's no longer theoretical anymore, I guess. Um, yeah, they did find it. <clears throat> yeah. Um, well, let's start. Let's just dive into the conspiracies here because, man, the last ten minutes we've sounded like complete fucking nerds. So basically, a lot of people are worried that this company might accidentally, uh, air quoting here, accidentally do something that could be ultimately lead to the end of the earth or they want the end of the earth or something like that or they might accidentally open up a portal or something like that you know what i'm saying they're messing with forces that they don't really understand and one of the biggest things that people are worried about is that they could accidentally create a black hole within this thing now more or less the one main thing that i heard is they'd accidentally accidentally create a black hole and then it would consume the earth from when it from inside more or less which obviously would kill us all um have you ever i think you've talked about previously like the the microscopic black holes correct yep the mini black holes now from what i was reading that's pure uh theoretical and they don't really think that they exist um well I've heard uh, a couple different things. I've heard that, like, it's theoretical, it doesn't exist. And I've also heard that they think it's already happened, but they dissipate so quickly. Yeah. Um, when the matter comes together, it, like, condenses down and then creates this microscopic black hole and then just dissipates because it's unstable. Yeah. Nothing's feeding it, yeah. basically. But, it's, like, I was reading something, people say, like, microscopic black holes are constantly hitting the earth or whatever or always have been but from what i was reading they've never found proof of that so uh or at least in the machine they've never saw it or whatever i don't i don't really know but uh but yeah that's one of the conspiracies that they might be i don't i don't even know how they i mean i guess they could accidentally open up a black hole which would be terrifying because obviously they don't know how to close them um <laughs> and they don't really yeah. know what they do the only way that you could be able to see one of those microscopic black holes is if you had like a bunch of other like particles around it and seeing how those particles like react around the black hole because that's the way that they found the black hole uh just recently the first ever picture taken of one. Oh yeah was I it was a there was a cloud around it and it was reacting with the cloud like really odd <laughs> oddly so i re i remember that picture like it's basically just black with like a little red spot right or it looks yeah, like and all the nerds light. were going fucking insane for it dude i have seen so many fucking memes of that thing on the internet like the second that thing was discovered people were just making fun of it so fucking much it was fucking hilarious yeah, there aren't many like better videos than like those nerds and those like <laughs> setters getting excited. Those are some of the best fucking videos of people being excited. <laughs> All right, Phil. Well, I'm just gonna ask you piece by piece here. Um, what do you think? Do you think they could accidentally create a black hole, uh, or they want to make a black hole to peek into different dimensions or something, or try to travel through a black hole? What do you think? I think that they probably already have but possibly like just don't know it yet. Mm. Um I mean really if you you think about it like that's would be a huge discovery for them. That'd be a huge get. Think of all the money they could make from that. Do I think it would swallow up the earth? No, not at all. I don't. Hmm. I don't think that they're trying to destroy the earth either. Even though they probably hate life, <laughs> they're probably not trying to destroy everyone on earth. Ooh, wait till we get to the later conspiracies. I think you might change your mind a little bit, Phil. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I have heard. I, I don't want to. <laughs> no, I don't, don't spoil it. Spot, but I have heard about uh, like the demon verse trying mm. to open up a portal. Hell and, yeah! Sa uh, we'll save that one for later. That's my that's my grand finale, baby. That's oh, I I figured. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I see portal to hell, I'm like, all right, this is right up my alley. Let's do it. Yeah, time to butter that bread. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so now let's move on to. The Higgs boson particle, a.k.a. the God particle. Okay, now I'm going to explain this as best as I can. So essentially what Higgs boson particle is, is the way they described it is the entire universe is made up of this substance. And what it does is it 
gives it either de- it determines whether other particles will have mass or they won't have mass. So essentially, it's literally all around us at all times. Um, the guy described it like if you imagine a a uh, say you're you're going across a place that's all snow. Okay, some people ski across it. That's like particles that have no mass. Then there's people who use snowshoes to walk across it. It slows you down, but you have mass there. And then if you just walk across it, you're really slow. So it kind of like determines the mass that other particles have. So it's basically everywhere in the uh, in the universe. Like it's literally around us right now. That's what I've understood of it. Um, and I guess that's why they kind of call it the God particle because it kind of determines what has mass and what doesn't, which I guess is technically life, right? Yeah. Um, it's, it's very interesting if you really think about it. Um, let me read you the nerdy, uh, Wikipedia version here. Uh, the Higgs boson is about 126 billion electron volts or about, 126 times the mass of a proton. This turns out to be the per- precise mass needed to keep the universe on the brink of instability, but physicists say the delight- delicate state will eventually collapse and the universe will become unstable. The conclusion involves the Higgs field. Now, the interesting thing here is basically they're saying that this thing could collapse at any mi- any moment and essentially the fucking universe won't exist, which <laughs> is kind of crazy to think about, right? Yeah, that'd be pretty fucking crazy if all <laughs> of a sudden it just happened. You wouldn't even know it, though. Everything would just fall apart. Yeah. Like, you would literally, like, along with the Earth, you would just dissolve. Like... I know. It, it, it's like, I don't know, that's like some fucking science fiction shit you hear, you know? Like, you never really think about that. Um... Now, Stephen Hawking's rest in peace. Uh, he, he was apparently pretty afraid of the Higgs, uh, boson particle. Uh, in a book he must have wrote before he died. This is his exact quote. The Higgs, uh, the Higgs potential has some worrisome feature that it might become metastable at energies above 100 billion giga electro, electron volts. This could mean that the universe could undergo catastrophic vacuum decay with a bubble of the true vacuum expanding at the speed of light. This could happen at any time and we wouldn't see it coming, just like you said. Um, so, uh, Mr. Hawking, he, uh, he, he knew the dangers of this thing. Now, this is where the conspiracy comes into play is what if humans messing with the LHC accidentally destabilizes the entire universe that would be pretty fucking crazy i mean imagine all of the other civilizations like on all the other planets who get fucked over because a couple nerds are (laughs) trying to get some grant money (laughs) yeah i know right like if you think about it in that terms that's kind of scary because technically they are playing around with that particular particle and if it's so delicate, like they make it out to be, um, I don't know if they should be fucked with it. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Like, if you think about it, so imagine that that happened like 100,000 light years away. So all of the stars that we see right now, like we wouldn't know if those stars are actually just swallowed up and if that bubble's coming at us. Because the light that we see coming off of that, those stars are like thousands of years old. Yeah. So, like, it could be coming at us right now. The stars in the sky could all be disintegrated, and we wouldn't even know it. Wow, that's true. Yeah, wow. because the light in front of the bubble is shielding the bubble from us. That is true. Huh. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I, did you watch uh, Dragon Ball Super? Yeah, I have seen a few did episodes you, of that. Did you see the one where, God, it was the one guy who took over Goku's body in the future, and then... They had to, like, finally wish him out of existence or something. Then they traveled back to their own time. It was just so fucking weird. But I don't know why it reminded me of this. Dragon Ball Super yeah, is not great. I do kind of remember how Dragon Ball, in the those later series, they were kind of just fishing for ideas. Like, <laughs> basically their whole season-long arcs of, like, finding a bad guy, 
yeah. fighting the bad guy and then you know everything's peaceful for a little bit like kind of went to shit on him well they had like fucking the guy turns into goku black and then his super saiyan forms like uh super saiyan rose or something i'm just like i don't know what the fuck's going on here just go back yeah. to the old drag like uh, that show i love it you know dragon ball z but man they they kind of reach that point where they become too powerful like their powers just keep getting more and more and it's just like okay how you gonna you gotta just cre- keep creating the most insane enemies for them to fight i do love it when uh basically like goku vegeta all of them gohan are like fighting somebody and then that that person like brings back like enemies from the past to come fight him, and then like Gohan or Vegeta will just tap him on the forehead and they'll just die. <laughs> like well, they'll bring back Frieza and he'll think that he's gonna take over the universe and they just smack him and he fucking like flies off the earth. Did you see on uh, Super they have Frieza, but it's an alternate universe Frieza and he's like super strong? Yeah, I've seen that. He came for the tournament. Yeah, right? it's, yeah. I'm yeah. just like, okay, all right, whatever. <sighs> yeah, all right. They're just trying to squeeze the last drop of out of it as they can. Oh yeah, it's, it's fucking ridiculous. Speaking of ridiculous, let's start to move on to the more silly conspiracies here. Now, all right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> now, in 2004. The CERN facility was gifted a statue of the Hindu god Shiva from India, which was placed right outside in front of the building. Now, Shiva, or Shiva, I think it's Shiva, is obviously the god of destruction, right? Now, this makes people extremely nervous, and what I was watching today is, in their religion, Shiva is essentially the... The statues posing are doing what they call the cosmic dance, which is essentially Shiva destroys the universe and then rebuilds it in a different way, which uh, apparently they're supposed to is supposed to stand for the particles and everything that they're messing with. I don't know. It's their collider is technically a cosmic dance, I think, is what they're supposed to be depicting. But people are thinking that. They might actually want to destroy the world and rebuild it in their image or whatever. So, um, but it is a very ominous statue to have outside of your uh, facility, right? Yeah. Uh, David Oppenheimer, after he created or watched the first nuclear blast, he quoted the well, the really famous Shiva quote, the now I am destroyer of the universe, that quote. Mm. I can't, I don't remember it off the top of my head, but he apparently read that <clears throat> quote like as he was watching this. Well, it sounded like the CERN facility was essentially initially created because of the atomic age, um, from what I was understanding, because if it was 1954, it was wouldn't have been that long after the bombings in uh, Hiroshima, right? So Yeah, it would have been like right at the beginning of the nuclear age, yeah, like so, right after Russia got the bomb. <clears throat> so that's a basically, from what I was understanding, that's kind of why they built... This facility is because uh, they needed to study nuclear shit. So, but anyway, uh, now this is interesting. In August of 2016, there was found footage video that depicts a supposed occult ritual occurring on the grounds of CERN. The video shows several people dressed in black cloaks surrounding a statue of the Hindu deity Shiva and apparently stabbing a woman in a human sacrifice. The video ended with the person uh, filming crying out and running away. Now, some people think this is a hoax and some people think that it is just, um, it's real. Like they're doing some weird occult ritual to Shiva. Now, CERN, this is kind of creepy CERN later stated in its frequently asked question, uh, questions that the video was, quote, fiction and the actions violated its professional guidelines as it would indeed a real ritual sacrifice. I don't know why they had to put that end part in there. Like, I feel like any ritual sacrifice should be against any company's guidelines. I don't I don't know. What do you, you would think? think so. I know. It's just like. <laughs> Hope so. <clears throat> like, I, I feel like they're slightly trolling people, but I couldn't. 
understand if they're saying that CERN employees were doing this as a joke or if other people were doing this as a joke to try to make the CERN facility look evil, I guess. You know what I mean? It could be one of those found footage situations where people make the fake footage and then put it out there as real. Yeah. Uh, People who have an agenda who think that CERN's trying to destroy the universe, I could see them making up something like that. I know. I I should have watched the video, but uh, (laughs) I I didn't, unfortunately. But I'm sure it went viral. Like, if people see that shit, I'm sure they're like, oh, my God, they're trying to kill us all or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Were they actually doing it, like, in the facility or were they doing it, like, in a place where you would recognize? It was, like, by the statue, which is outside. Oh, gotcha. So it's like someone is filming from a distance laughing about these cult members sitting there and then they stab the girl like they're killing her for sacrifice for shiva and then obviously the guy runs off crying because he witnessed the woman getting stabbed to death yeah sounds like a really cool high school (laughs) art project i'm a little skeptical of everything though so i mean i the chances of that they murdering a woman on tape outside of the facility and then like the police not in, in, like investigating or anything. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. But honestly, with that shit, I mean, any like chance for those dudes to see a naked chick? Probably <laughs> they might they might make a little fake fucking ritual. Up. <laughs> uh, in a lot of those you hear about in those cult practices, like nowadays, especially they're using like the fake knives and the blood packs and everything like that. Almost mm-hmm. kind of like they're acting it out. Like they don't really even believe that it's, you know, like, yeah, happening for real. Like yeah. they're actually calling on something. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, yeah. But anyway, that kind of leads us into one of the next, uh, conspiracies is that CERN is using the LHC to try to open up a gateway and some people think they want to summon Shiva into the world uh, to basically destroy the world and then obviously they can rebuild it in their image or uh, for the Christian listeners, they just are trying to to look at God himself or whatever. Um, obviously, we, we talked earlier about possible black holes or opening gateways into different dimensions. Uh, some people think they're trying to figure out how to summon God. Uh, I think especially when they hear the word God particle, you know, people's minds start to wander. Um, do you think they could be trying to do this, Phil? I mean, <laughs> no. There might be, I mean, I can't say 0%, but there might be one dude in there who has the idea for it. I think what they mean by God particle is kind of like Higgs boson is what regulates everything. It's kind of like the glue that holds the universe together. And that's why it's the God particle. It's the, the old design. Like, I think that's why they call it the God particle, but I wouldn't doubt it. If people did think that they were trying to summon like a deity or, you know, demon or angel or something, they wanted something supernatural (laughs) to fly out of there. Well, the, uh, the one crazy guy video I was watching, um, he claims that CERN, they got the name from, I think it was a Celtic god named, uh, Cernerus or something like that. It's basically a fucking devil with a bunch of horns and all this shit, and I don't know. Uh, they think that's where he's getting the idea that they have occult practices and they're trying to summon the gods, old gods, or some shit, I don't fucking know. Uh, yeah, but... I what I meant with the god particle like you said is they don't like it being called the god particle but when religious conspiracy theorists hear the word god particle I think that's where they get it in their mind that they're trying to summon god into our existence or something. Yeah, I can see that with less intelligent like you know the people you would think of would you know come up with that shit. I mean, obviously like the the whole like church, like the clergy, if they can't make money off of it, they're not going to use it. So <laughs> they can't make something inflammatory like that. But then, you know, these the people lesser down in the chain, I could see them coming up with that bullshit themselves. The the, uh, the the crazy guy in the video I watch, he he was believing that the Vatican is involved with CERN because the Vatican wants to summon God, too. 
Oh, really? Well, I'm yeah. guessing that guy's probably not Catholic. <laughs> it's not his flavor. Of He's a Methodist. He's a Methodist. He doesn't fuck oh, with. Oh, he, he is. He doesn't fuck with. And I don't know what he is. He's just some dumb shit. I don't know. All right, let's. Uh, this one's kind of along the same lines, but it's more in my flavor. Um, and you talked about it earlier. Is they are trying to open up a portal to hell or to the demon realm or something? And I actually have two quotes. From religious people that I think are awesome. And I think you'll enjoy them. According to blogger Christian Truther, the site says, Antimatter is the opposite of matter. It isn't physical. It's spiritual. And it's all around us. It's also quite elusive and chaotic. As the machines are able to trap and contain chaotic antimatter, they are able to study it bringing them one step closer to manifesting it physically. They see themselves as God on earth and think that their actions are replicated by a God in heaven. CERN is building the kingdom of the Antichrist, hell on earth. So what do you think first, about Christian blogger? First of all, I've got to say Christian truther. Truth. Uh Great name for a child. <laughs> anyone out there who's you know got a got a little uh, runt on the way? That's that'd be awesome. What's your name? Christian Truther Ugh. Smith or whatever. That'd be great. Second of all, uh, I really like his level of crazy. I like where his head's at. Good. Um, I love the CERN is a building is building the kingdom of the Antichrist, hell on earth. I love that part. Thank you, Christian yeah. Truther. All right, now Dude, we- that's a hot take. That is a hot take. <laughs> All right, now we got another one from Clyde Lewis. He wrote on the Ground Zero website, uh, it, is it just a coincidence that CERN is short for the horned god Cerninos? Is it also a coincidence that CERN has to go deep underground to do their god harnessing experiments? Cerninos was the god of the underworld. All right, so checkmate atheist. Um, yeah, <laughs> so that was the god's name. I was wrong. Cerninos. Um, he's like that horn god, and he's like holding a snake and whatever. So basically, yeah. uh, these people believe essentially is that demons have their own dimension, non physical dimensions, and that CERN is going to open up a portal to the demon dimension, and then demons are going to flood Earth and destroy it and take it over. That's essentially their belief system. Um, Some people do believe that demons exist on a different plane, much like aliens exist on a different plane of existence. So, I don't know. I guess if dimensions exist, Maybe they could open them up, but I don't think they're trying to open them up just to destroy the earth. What it, how, What do you feel like? Well, first of all, got to go back to uh, that guy's statement. Really, it's great journalistic skills where you ask a couple of questions right off the bat to get people thinking, you know, nudge them off of their logic. Uh, right. Really, really strong writing there, too. Really, uh, <laughs> I like these two people. You know. <laughs> I love the crazies. I love the crazy bloggers and crazy website people. They're my favorite. Yeah, they probably have like totally normal jobs too. Oh, like, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure that they're also the kind of people who leave pamphlets. Like 20 years ago, they were leaving pamphlets in people's windows. But now they have the internet, which is a much broader fucking bullshit fucking bandwidth. But <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's crazy how like, really, we talk about this all the fucking time, but it's like a community. You know, mm. these people come together in a community and hate fuck all of these, you know, or they think that they're doing the God's work, you know, but <laughs> yeah, I yeah. know it's, uh, it's great for them that they can just talk crazy amongst themselves. But, uh, sometimes that gets a little dangerous. Yeah. The great thing for us normal people is they pretty much become memes of themselves. Mm-hmm. Like, and then we get to make fun of them on things like this. So. <laughs> All right, now the next one, which actually kind of got me thinking, is that CERN could be responsible for the Mandela effect. Now, what they're saying essentially is that them messing with these particles and things like that have accidentally kind of um, changed our reality a little bit. 
So when you think about the Mandela effect, which we will cover in detail at one point, that the certain things like, say, the Bernstein Bears is actually the Berenstein Bears, like maybe it originally was they did something on the machine, kind of flickered our reality, and now it has changed it to, say, the Berenstein Bears. What say you, Phil? Uh, yeah, actually, we I think we tried to do this episode, episode two. It's it's the lost episode. Yeah, but uh, it, it was terrible. By the way. <laughs> but I <laughs> but, said uh, we, did, we didn't know what we were doing with the show back then. Yeah, but, I, I know. yeah, I love I love the Mandela effect. I especially love it when it comes to JFK. I would love to do the whole Mandela effect video, uh, but it's really hard to do because it's so massive. Yeah. Uh, I have actually heard that it could be CERN, the CERN Super Collider, that is basically like they disintegrate the fabric between our parallel dimen- our dimension and a parallel dimension, and then they kind of come together. These tiny little changes end up mixing together. I know. that When I heard that, I'm like, well, okay, if we actually think the Mandela effect exists, like them messing with uh, particles of the universe, I mean, I don't know, makes you think. Yeah, I just, I love it how it's so, ever, all the little changes are so subtle too. Like, there isn't really any huge ones that you would notice, like, in everyday life. It's just one of those things where you kind of notice, like, hey, the, like, the store staples. I never remembered it having, like, the L be a little broken staple. I always remember it as just a regular L. And there's a bunch of other ones. Jiffy Peanut Butter yeah. um, is Jif. Uh, you know, you but know, of course, they say that we're mixing together Jif and Skippy, but I don't believe that bullshit. <laughs> uh, I actually <laughs> I actually literally just had my own Mandela effect. So my sister, uh, you know, we you get Disney Plus for free or whatever. So they've been watching the original Star Wars movies. And in the second one, right after we got done recording last week, we're, I was heading upstairs and it was the part where Luke... Or Darth Vader tells Luke, uh, Luke, I am your father. And they were saying he doesn't word it like that. I swear I remember it as Luke, I am your father. Yeah, that's one of the biggest Mandela effects. Is it? Is, uh, everyone thinks that it's Luke, I am your father. But the reality, it's no, I am your father. That's the, yeah, that's a that's a really big one. I, but. I didn't, I never knew that one. And then it just happened to me without even knowing. I'm like, what the fuck? But maybe, you know, I'm misremembering, but uh, I don't know. It tripped me up. Yeah, they claim that because it's such a popular, like, like, a pop culture, like, reference, and it was, like, gotten wrong so many times that it, like, manifested. Like, it got into the mindset of people to always think, Luke, I am your father, just because it was done wrong so many times. Like, it's been parody on everything. Yeah, so. that's what I'm saying. Like, everything fucking parody. That's like, it, yeah, yeah. The, the whole Matrix red pill and blue thing, yeah. blue pill thing, there's the uh, what if I told you part that wasn't actually in the movie, but everyone thinks it's in the movie. That's another one. <sighs> Damn you, CERN. Quit doing this. You're tripping everybody up. Yeah, those little assholes have nothing better to do than to fuck with everybody. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, I, got, I got two more here. Now, uh, n- this next one I think might actually be feasible is that possibly CERN is using the mat- matter and antimatter studies to possibly create uh, weapons. Now, essentially what people are afraid of is if they could harness the power of man- uh, matter and antimatter, they could make essentially a nuclear bomb that wouldn't leave radiation and shit everywhere. Um, or they're trying to create like particle weapons or, or things like that. You know what I mean? Trying yeah. to harness the explosive power of uh, particles and whatever. Um, I think this one actually has a little bit of concern that they could do stuff like that. Yeah, I well, I mean, you were talking about that the the strangelies, those yeah. particles. Imagine if you just like combine like like a few of them together. And you could take like a chunk of a continent out. Yeah. You know, you would, you wouldn't only destroy a city. You could destroy an entire country with that. I know. That's, that's scary that such tiny particles are so dangerous. Yeah. And in a sense like that, you could put something in the side, like you could put a bomb like that. You could shrink it down so it could destroy a whole like county and have it fit in like a Honda Civic trunk, you know? <laughs> yeah. Something like that. That, <laughs> 
you wouldn't even need a truck bomb to blow up a building. That's like a fucking mega bomb to take out like an entire countryside. Yeah. Fit in the size of like nothing, like a suitcase, basically. Now, on a more positive note, would you be opposed to them if they found a way to harness the power of antimatter and turn it into like a renewable energy? Kind of like Spider-Man 2, where they created the, the sun. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I forgot about that one. The guy with the robotic octopus arms. Uh, <laughs> Doc Ock. Like yeah, it's almost like a, uh, what was it in Galaxy Quest? It was like a beryllium sphere. <laughs> but he took like that metal and created like a little sun. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, though, if they cr- could create micro explosions with the antimatter then you could essentially make a, uh, a renewable resource out of it. Yeah, the only problem would be capturing it without destroying the receptacles, like yeah. the things you're trying to capture it with, yeah. not destroying those. But yeah, it'd be pretty, I mean, you'd have like so much fucking energy coming from that. Yeah, I know. But uh, that would be great for the world if they could. But again, yeah. once you do that, then you're kind of opening up the doorway to more nefarious shit, so... It'd be great for the world until you blow the motherfucker up, <laughs> pretty much. One of those situations. You would have to do it off-world. It'd be like, the story of the Earth. Well, we had unlimited energy for the planet for about four days, and then uh, we blew it to smithereens. Blew it to smithereens. That's what, <laughs> I think it's uh, Star Trek. I don't mean to get on it Well, we're doing a nerdy subject here. So <laughs> I think that they were talking about in the old, it's like the Star Trek Enterprise series. They were talking about how they had to test their antimatter drive engines off planet in case they blew up the plant like they blew up they didn't blow up the whole fucking planet isn't that what they used to like move through space in the show yeah antimatter engines mm. all right should we do the very last conspiracy phil yeah let's go all right now barry satiro we're not leaving him out what if barry satiro would use the lhc to open up a gateway to another dimension that his reptilian brothers would then flood through and then take over the planet. What do you think about that? I mean, it sounds not only likely, but most truly possible. (laughs) This, like, it's right up his fucking alley. (laughs) He just opens it up and all the reptilian Barry Satiros just flood through there and we just have Obamas everywhere. No wonder he stole all of the money from the good capitalists and gave it to the scientists. <laughs> that asshole. <laughs> Once again, Barry Satiro fucked us all. God damn it. Barry Satiro strikes again. All right, Phil. Um, so does any one of these in particular uh, stick out to you where you would be like, it's plausible? Um, Let's see. The Mandela Effect one, I really yeah. like. I'm not sure if it's plausible, but I really <laughs> like it. Like on a personal, you know, yeah, level, yeah, I like yeah. that one. Yeah, it's good. Um, the Strangelings, it's pretty cool. And you said like they were if they tried to weaponize it or try to make an energy source it's, out it, of it, I could totally see that. By the way, it's um, the Strange Lets. Strange Lets. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Then I said that probably wrong. Eight That's times. okay. I don't worry about it. Um. Yeah. The Higgs boson being a like destroyer of worlds i love that one too yeah Um, well not destroyer of worlds that's a fucking destroyer of universes oh it's a destroyer of universe yeah that one yeah i really like that one (laughs) i would actually give that one probably a decent percentage yeah like i'd say like five man that would be i'm i mean i guess we wouldn't even know when it happened but uh (laughs) they accidentally destroyed the entire fucking existence with that not good yeah, that's a lot of universe to fucking disintegrate. It's true. That's true. Uh, yeah, it's weird. I don't know. It's it's kind of creepy to think about, but uh, but yeah, uh, this is a very weird and super uh, nerdy subject. But in the same sense, I think it's very interesting, and it's really shown how far science has come. But uh, fi- oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> But Phil, if anybody uh, wants to send us their concerns about CERN, where can they do that? Well, uh, you can send it right to subliminaldpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, we love hearing from fans and uh, even getting suggestions. We actually got a really good suggestion last week, and I'm going to uh, make my episode off of that suggestion. So it was oh, a yeah. really good, really good idea. So 
Uh, if you want to get a hold of us that way, other way is on Instagram. Subliminal Deception Podcast is on IG. Uh, that's actually the best way to get a hold of us. I check that at least two or three times a day. Uh, really great to hear from people. We get a lot of likes and a lot of shares from our fans. That's awesome. Uh, we also have our own personal Instagrams. Mine's SD Pod Phil. I just recently posted my killer robot on there. So oh, go yeah. ahead and look at that. Cody, you got a few of your own? Uh, yeah, you can follow my personal Instagram at Cody Zabub. You can follow my other podcast uh, at Bumblebub Podcast on Instagram, or you can search for Bumblebub Podcast on your favorite podcasting application. Just search Bumblebub Podcast if you like true crime, paranormal, sometimes aliens. Uh, all that good stuff. Now the cryptids. Last, yeah, oh, cryptids. <laughs> I always forget about the cryptids, and those are some of my favorite episodes. Uh, the Jordan episodes. <laughs> uh, last thing we need you to do is to log on to iTunes and leave the show a five-star review. Uh, we've been getting quite a few. Thank you for those. Uh, I know we've got plenty of listeners, so if you could do that for us, that would be amazing. Uh, otherwise, we will see you guys next week. Thanks, guys.